In this next video, we're going to take a tour of the benefits of a public cloud data warehouse. We'll look at the costs. We'll look at the quote unquote infinite scale that comes with those, the workload customizability, which is a huge benefit, the benefits that you get of a managed service. And as anybody who's been in IT more than a couple of years knows, nothing is free. With a lot of the things that you get, there's drawbacks and there's trade-offs. And we'll discuss those openly as well. So in other decks, we talked about how 70-90% of the cost of a self-management system is all of this stuff in the red, all this undifferentiated heavy lifting, all these things that, again, don't differentiate you from your competitors. What we find is if we can remove a lot of these things, we can start shedding internal admins, start shedding consultants, and we can start lowering our overall cost. Ideally, we would like to see a situation like we have here where our business intelligence folks, they're in the blue outnumber our system administrators. And unfortunately, I think a lot of businesses, probably yours as well, isn't in this shape. And we've got maybe an army of admins supporting a handful of business intelligence folks. And that's kind of flip-flopped. So there's been a lot of other studies out there that show the costs involved with acquiring any on-premise system typically way outweighs the actual money spent on application development. So hiring developers to actually build your business differentiating product. So with Amazon, they have this phrase that they repeat forever in their marketing that says you only pay for what you need only when you need it. If you don't need to be analyzing data more than once a month, then just turn on your data warehouse for those couple hours a month and then turn it back off when you're done. So something else that's nice to have in a public cloud data warehouse is this quote unquote infinite scale. So we may want to, through our ETL process, keep adding to our database, keep adding to our OLAP system and adding and adding. And before you know it, we're at this huge, huge system and we're able to extract all this business value out of it. Or we may want to really ramp that system up if we've got a whole bunch of data we want to process, not only last week's or last month's, but maybe the last 10 years we want to load into our data warehouse and go through and process that. So having this ability to scale it up to very big size, as well as having control over the CPU and the RAM in the individual servers, the individual cluster itself is something that the public cloud provides. And the really nice thing is to be able to tame that data warehouse. Once it gets to a certain size, we may want to then prune it and pull some of that out and put some of it in archival storage. So the ability to shrink it back down to a manageable size, both in cost and in the amount of data that we have in there is something unique that the public cloud can provide. So not only is it nice to be able to shrink it down, it's nice to make it completely go away when you don't need it. If you only need to do business analysis, you know, like I said, once a week for a couple hours, it's really nice to have something like the public cloud where you can just spin that up, use it for a couple of hours, do your analysis, and then shut it back down. Workload customizability is another huge benefit. So we can think about maybe workload number one here where we have daily reporting stats. We know very well what we're trying to do. We only need two machines for this, two nodes, and we only need general purpose, low cost hardware. Maybe we are going through and we're looking at how many times our app was downloaded, checking our user stats, our users using the new feature that we thought was cool, looking at A-B tests, uh, which one is more successful, things like this let's say that you get a Reddit first page and you need now not only two nodes, you need 20. You can continually add to your data warehouse in something like a public cloud and you can then shut it back down when you don't need it. So if you look at a second workload, maybe you're doing a multi-year data mine, in which case you need to load tons of data in there. It's very CPU intensive and for disk performance, it needs SSDs, those solid state drives rather than mechanical. With this, you can then again span up and continue adding maybe up to 300 nodes, do all of your processing, and then shrink it all back down when you're all done. Again, if you were in your own on-premise data warehouse, you would have to pay for every one of these, both the hardware, the software licensing cost, the installation, all this silliness. And if you only needed that once every six months or year, it's going to sit around unused most of the other time. So being a managed service, a public data warehouse provides a lot of value in its ability to give you things just out of the box. So first of all, you get the efficiency of experts. You get folks who know a data warehouse inside and out, designing it for you, building it for you the way it's supposed to be, putting in all the levers that they think you will need so that you can then focus on the business problem and spend, like we said, 70, 80, 90% of your time developing cool software rather than developing repeated infrastructure. The on-demand provisioning is a huge benefit. So I get roadblocks out of my way if I need to do some data analysis. 
I don't have to go down to my procurement department and ask them to spend the next few months negotiating a license for an on-prem data warehouse and then spend another few months waiting for some resources internally to set it up and configure it everything. I can literally, in Redshift, turn a data warehouse on in about three minutes with the kiosk. Total flexibility allows me to increase innovation in my organization. The pay-as-you-go model is huge in that you can only use what you need only when you need it. If you need a whole bunch of capacity, spin it up. If you don't need any, turn it all off. Some other benefits we have are the scalability and elasticity of a public data warehouse. We can grow to very large sizes. We can shrink down to nothing when we don't need it. That ability to breathe in and breathe out and then control where you need it as well. So I like to say in other classes that I teach for Amazon that a managed service typically provides the top 80, and even in the case of a data warehouse, probably more like the top 90, 95% of common use case scenarios. And then anything that you need to optimize or tune beyond that is allowed with certain levers that they let you pull. So again, with the flip side of that sword of all the things that you get are things that you give up. So when you're dealing with a managed system, you give up some control. You don't have the ability to go down and fine tune the disk layout and so forth. They expose the parameters that they think you'll need. And if you need more optimization beyond that, you may have to build your own. On-demand provisioning requires that your users understand what they're doing and the ramifications of that. So they need to understand what a CPU is, what a memory is and RAM what the different costs are involved. And they need to understand also that when they turn something on, it's really easy to leave it on and forget about it. So that elasticity, it's easy for me. I can spin up a 300 node cluster in three minutes. It's super easy to forget about something like that until my bill arrives. So you wanna make sure that your folks are really educated if they're using public cloud as to turning everything back off when they're done. And then again, the control where you need it, if you don't fit in the top 80 or in the case of uh, Redshift, maybe the top 90% use case, you may have to go out and custom build your own. So some other drawbacks that are included here, it can increase your vendor lock-in in the public cloud. You'll find that when you're using something like Redshift, you're gonna to wanna to keep your data closer to Redshift. So you might start using other services like S3, the object storage. You might use their queuing systems. You might start using some EC2. Before you know it, you've got a whole bunch of stuff deployed up in there and it's not so easy to take it back out. Could also increase latency. If your data sources are hosted on-prem, your OLTP database or whatever you're using to feed and to populate your Redshift cluster, if that exists elsewhere, the time that it takes for you to move it from one system to another can affect the cost. And this is why we talk in other decks about something called Presto, which lets you actually look at data in place. It's starting to cannibalize some Redshift workloads. So security, I think, is a concern that really isn't. In this course, we talk about a dozen services that Amazon offers that help you secure and keep your data and keep access to that data limited. We see it used heavily in workloads for companies like NASDAQ, who obviously are heavily regulated, heavily audited. And in another presentation, we talk about how they get away with it. Redshift and technologies like it, I think public cloud in a lot of ways is more secure than your own on-premise. But again, we'll talk about that in other decks. I hope we've been able to give you a quick overview of the benefits of a public cloud data warehouse. Again, other decks talk about the drawbacks of a self-managed and the underlying concepts of a lot of the things we've discussed here. Definitely go back before you get much deeper in this course and do any reviews of anything that doesn't make sense here. Thanks a bunch for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you need more information on this topic, please click on learn more. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.